Hi, I'm Monica Chusett and we are in Westport, Connecticut. Well, back in um, 1994, uh, we lost our daughter, Rebecca, to um, complications after open heart surgery. And um, it was a very devastating time. And when I, when I held her in my arms for the last time, it just came out and I said, I'm gonna do something to um, make your life meaningful because you're such a great kid. And um, I promised that to her. She had the surgery, um, which to repair her heart, which was supposed to be the, what they were calling the final repair. And a lot of kids go through this and she was supposed to be fine. And, but two days later, the, the, not the day after her surgery, but the, the following day, September 27th, she had like a, um, a, like a coronary and they couldn't revive her. And that's, you know, and that's what happened. On the way to the hospital, um, on, um, I guess it was September 25th, 1994, um, for, where Becca was preparing for the, the surgery that was supposed to repair her heart forever, um, I turned around and looked in the back seat and we had, we had a little Jetta, we had a little car, but I had shoved three, three uh, seats in the back, one, two for the twins, um, Jen and Rebecca, and one for uh, a booster seat for Hannah, who I guess was uh, about, how old was she? Maybe three and a half at the time. And um, I turned around and the three of them were holding hands. And I said, wow, and I just took a picture of that. But I guess I didn't realize how meaningful that was going to be until later when it seems to me that they were holding hands. I mean, I don't, I mean, they were too little to understand what was really going on. But at some level, they must have because they were both holding Rebecca's hands. And um, it was like some kind of bonding of their sisterhood or giving her strength or just simply maybe they knew you know that she was not coming back I don't know and it took us about a year and in the um, winter of the fall of 1995 we went to the president of our shul and we told her what we wanted to do we wanted to do a toy drive and she said great idea I'm 100% behind you and that's how it got started and we put a toy box out at the shul and people just started coming and putting toys in. And I think maybe the first year we maybe collected about 200 toys. Um, flash forward to, um, to today, and we probably, we collect over a thousand toys, and we have about 25 um, recipients, hospitals, um, children's organizations, children in need, um, we even, um, we collect, sometimes people prefer to give us money or gift cards, and when we get those, we send them, um, we, had a, of a nice, we had a relationship with somebody at the National Institute of Health, so we, for the children who are, who have died from AIDS, so we, uh, who are dying from AIDS, so we send gift cards out to them, um, we, we just, we have, uh, like I said, we have about 25 organizations now that we give toys to. healing because we feel like we're doing something you know it's it's a way for us to to always bring Rebecca back into the picture so it's very very healing for all of us you know the, the best part about this is that her name her name lives on and I get a chance to talk about her every year so she's not just the name on a toy drive but you know I can I can breathe life into her memory You know, I have to say that the, the community, the, the Westport community, um, is so very generous. We have um, different drop-off points and collection points. Um, we do this whole drive throughout the conservative synagogue of Westport. Um, there, uh, but we also get big collections from Coley Town Middle School, where my, both my girls went to school. They organize an enormous drive every year. And, you know, this year I was a little worried because of the economy. I thought that maybe we wouldn't get as much, but we just, we got as much as we ever did. People just open their hearts and their wallets and they love to participate. And 
um, this is this is really an amazing community. We also have a friend in in New York who owns a uh, a technology company, and he puts a box out, and he gets a lot of toys and sends them off to us. And just we have a lot of very, we're very blessed with a very generous community, generous family, and generous friends. They were unbelievable. I don't know how it would have. Um, made it without the community. That's when I met most of my friends because um, we moved up here and Rebecca was ill and she needed a lot of attention. We couldn't take her to a lot of places because, um, especially before her surgery, because we had to keep her from getting sick. She had to be very healthy going into surgery. Um, and I was always home, you know, taking care of her. We had um, through the night nursing for her. I would, you know, have to take care of her during the day, but then the, you know, we were provided with nursing at night so we could sleep, um, or I could take care of other things that I had to do that I couldn't do because I was taking care of her all day long. Um, and the community, you know, when, when she passed away, they all descended upon us like this big pair of arms. If there was anybody who was um, as closest to family you can get without being related, it's my friends Karen and Harry Fish, um, and their three wonderful kids, David, Melissa, and Sammy. The other part of it too is that we we're really lucky that we have um, an incredible extended family, and um, who are always there for us. I have a twin sister. Uh, Elise and and um, she lives in New Jersey with um, with her husband Jeffrey and daughters Haley and Whitney and we're all very close and Adam has a sister Deborah um, her her son is Jonah and we're very close with them and his, he's got a brother who's married his name is Todd and married to Chris they have three beautiful daughters Sophia Samantha and Rosie and. Um, my parents, uh, Howie and Lois, live in New Jersey, and his parents, Muriel and Don, live in New York City. And we're just all very, very close and supportive of one another. And I think that's the other part of it, too, you know, that, that we're so blessed to have that. So, you know, that also made it, um, I'm not going to say easier, but it made it bearable. Just having gone through this whole thing with losing Rebecca and then and doing this toy drive, um, it puts a lot of things in perspective and, you know, you, you realize what's important. You get to see that uh, whatever your problems are, there's always somebody who's got more to deal with. <laughs> so it, it kind of helps you put things in perspective or helps us put things in perspective. I've made a lot of, you know, met a lot of really cool and interesting folks who do so many wonderful things just so selflessly for their communities through this. So it's, it's, it's just a nice thing. You know, we're all connected. We all need to touch each other. We all need to help each other. And to do it through Rebecca is an amazing thing. She was, she was just always sweet, happy, smiling, hugging all the time. And... I guess she just gave me everything she had before she was gonna leave. So, if we could, you know, we just took all that love and we distribute it out now. <laughs> and that's how, that's how she goes, that's how she goes on.